Hi, welcome to another video of Nerdy Tech Tips channel. Today I am going to create another tutorial how to install Nextcloud and how to host it locally on any Windows 10 machine or any virtual machine, but you gotta install a Linux. I would be using Ubuntu 20.04 and recently one of our new subscriber has just requested for this tutorial. So that's why I have decided to go ahead with this tutorial. Stay tuned if you wanna host it properly and we will look at few features that it has to offer. Let's go. So as usual, we have a fresh installation of Ubuntu 20.04 LTS version. So let's start installing the components that are required for Nextcloud and for our convenience. The very first component I always like to install is SSH. So we're gonna go ahead and head into terminal sudo apt install open SSH server. Type in your password, hit yes, and let it continue. The SSH server has finished installing. Now we need to know the IP address of this virtual machine. For me, it's a bit easier. I can just go into Hyper-V Manager, head into networking. Usually the IP address is here, but too bad it's not there. And if config does not work, you need to install sudo apt I was thinking I should get away with that by using the Hyper-V but unfortunately it's not letting me do that. I need to install that. That's okay. Well you got plenty of space. fconfig and here we go. That's the IP address. 22 ending with 22. Head into our command prompt ssh type the username at IP address 0.22 type yes and type in the password here we go now we have our SSH server working and we're gonna close down this virtual machine in the background and start with you know getting all the updates that are available sudo get update sudo apt update it's updating now all the packages are available to be upgraded next thing we need three components we need a web server and php modules and also we need a database server so we're going to install first apache sudo space apt space install space apache 2 hit enter okay we're done with the apache server installation now we're gonna go ahead and install PHP by default on Ubuntu 20.04 it installs 7.4 it is going to install all the modules as as you can see here but for like our convenience and we should not run into any errors I'm going to type everything again to just make sure that it is installing all the components that we need now we are installing a database server, hit yes, you can copy all the commands from the description below, we type sudo dash apt dash install dash mariodb dash server, that's the one that we typed. Now we're going to secure our installation of database server, sudo space mysql dash secure dash installation and hit enter. Now we don't have any password, we're going to set up a password, root password for our database. Uh, yes. Now 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the password that I usually use for my tutorials. Remove anonymous user, yes. Disallow root login remotely, yes. Remove test database and access to it, yes. Reload privilege tables now, yes. Thanks for using MarioDB, there you go. We have that installed. Now next thing we want to do is create a database. And before we do that, 
we just want to make sure all of our PHP modules are installed. So this is a long command. Should be able to find in description and hit enter. We need to get rid of PHP SMB client. We don't need that. Okay, so let's go. Get rid of that and hit enter. Should be fine with that. Since we have installed Apache, we want to make sure it runs all the time. Whenever we restart our server, by default it's running. To do that, you need to type sudo space systemctl space enable space apache2.service. There are a few other things you can do with that command. This is to just enable auto start. You can type reload here. You can type start here to start the service. You can type stop to stop the service. So hit enter. There you go, it has been enabled. Now, this is the next command that we're using to log in into our MySQL database server. So you need to type sudo, we are going to MySQL space dash user uh, space root, user is root, and then dash p. Here we go. Now we have logged into our database server. To create a database, you can type create database space nxcloud underscore db. Now you can type anything here. I could type nerdy db, nerdy database, right? The database has been created. We are going to create a user for this database and grant all the permissions. So we're typing grant space all space on space nxcloud underscore db dot asterisk space two space comma i think it's a comma that's what you call in english nx underscore user comma so this is an in, in like kind of in a bracket at localhost whatever is the ip address for our database server is you know installed on this particular machine so we're calling it localhost identified by one two three four is a password whatever password you would like to put here and then hit enter there we go that's done it was pretty nice and easy just creating database user and creating a password for the user now we are out of our mysql login the next thing we want to do is download the latest version now how do you get that latest version link here all you need to do is go into nextcloud website nextcloud.com we need to find something related to packages or installation or something like that get nextcloud server packages download nextcloud right click on it copy link address all right and when you go into command prompt you can right click and automatically paste in command prompt and here we're downloading it so we have successfully downloaded it i had to download it again for some reason my internet connection stopped so that's why it is named like this the next command we need is sudo underscore unzip underscore nextcloud over here we are going to change the name of the file. It is dot one and hit enter. There we go. It is. And there we go. It is finished. We don't need to run any bash file this time with on cloud. You need to run a bash file. But with this, it is pre configured. That's it. Only thing we need to do is we need to edit our config file, which is located here. Sudo underscore nano. Nano is a notepad, kind of a notepad in Linux. And then space type this location and you should be able to get into this file this file should be empty by default all right this is empty we are going to type i'm going to leave this into the description make sure you replace the domain name uh sorry not the domain the folder location or whatever is here as you can see i've still got on cloud written here so make sure you change it to next cloud or whatever location you have decided to install it to and hit enter control o to uh, save it and hit enter there we go control x to exit out of this file now we're going to set some permissions um, to these modules and hit enter you can copy these commands and also we're going to change some permissions you can copy this command as well it's a bit easier if you just do copy and paste. These commands are pretty much same for every kind of web server configuration. So these, these are default things that you gotta do every time. 
we are going to do is restart our Apache server. We're done with everything. Hopefully, we are not going to run into any issues. There we go. Now we need to get into the browser and type 10.10. 10 .10 .10 whatever is the IP address of your next cloud machine and also make sure you type next cloud here and hit enter there you go we got a screen it means nothing has failed if you have been following along that's great you have successfully installed next cloud if you do run into any issues feel free to write down in the comment section below and let me know and let me see if i can help you out and i'll try my best so let's go ahead and create a user admin user we are going to type admin password one two three four easy to remember with these testing environments over here we're using mysql mariadb and remember your users that you have created now we've got a notepad on the other screen where i save all the configurations so database name is here it, it is at localhost database password was one two three four And database user was nx underscore user. Everything is filled out. We need to click on finish setup. It is going to take a while. I'm going to fast forward the video. So we have finished installing Nextcloud. We're going to hit this arrow. See what it is telling us. 100% open source and community focused. So that's good. It, they got apps for everything. App store. Um, that's great. Start using Nextcloud. Set up an account. Important mail. Manual. So you can add your email accounts here. That's wonderful. It's all in one solution. So I believe that will be the contact tab. There is calendar. You can add appointments here. Whatever you would like to. Sync them. Collaborate with your team. There is a talk option. I've looked on my phone. There's actually two apps that you can install nextcloud um, communication talk i guess and there is nextcloud journal for uploading files that's it i guess that will allow you to make like um you know whatsapp kind of stuff like make video calls text messages and collaborate with your team that is a really really good feature for like small to medium businesses for smes it's, it's really a good solution for smes if they want to host it locally, I mean, that's a great solution. What else you would ask for? I mean, you know, you got your privacy there. If you're using third party apps like WhatsApp for your business or anything else, you've been tracked. Your whole business data is out there and it's in Facebook's hands. So, you know, it's better to host solutions like this on your premises and keep your privacy to yourself. Here is photos you can upload photos your albums blah 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 i want to see how you can add users if you would like to add users i am an admin and see i am admin so users add a group a new user oh okay that's how you add a user create a password type in the email address you can also assign storage that's wonderful I don't know why it's only going up to 10 gig. Default quota. Default quota. It should actually allow you to define settings. It's just either unlimited or 5 gig or 10 gig. Not sure. Maybe my drive or whatever I'm using in Hyper V, it's only up to 25 gig. But still, it should have an option. But anyways, I will leave that up to you guys, whoever decide to use Nextcloud. But for me, it's a great solution. I would be using in future. But for me, at the moment, this server kind of installation is not a requirement. I don't need to use it. But I look forward to use Nextcloud in my next project. Thanks for watching. If this video was helpful and you're able to learn how to host Nextcloud or you have already hosted by following along, with this video, I really appreciate that and please make sure you subscribe and like this video and share with your colleagues or your friends, whoever needs to know how to host Nextcloud and what are the some features and they want to have a sneak peek. This video is a good for them.
Thank you. Bye now.